Hey guys, Tommy Bryson here, and welcome to the Tommy Bryson Show. Now, I've seen people make a lot of money, and I've reacted to them on the channel before, but I've never reacted to someone making $378,000 just writing. $378,000 just writing. To me, that sounds insane, but I wanna find out exactly how she does this, and on top of that, she's also self-employed, so it's like her own business and so on, but yeah, sounds great to me. When I used to hear about that much money, it was like, oh my gosh, so much money, but I hear a lot now just, oh, that's a lot of taxes, <laughs> if you're not careful, a lot, a lot of taxes, so be very careful how you spend your money. Taxes, taxes are always important. Now, if you guys are new here, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you're notified, and on top of that, also destroying the like button. Now, without further ado, let's see exactly how this girl right here is making $378,000 a year. Oh my God. I doubled my income overnight and that was crazy to me. At 24, 25, making 14 or 15K per month is insane. By the way, 24, 25, making 14 to, what is it, 12K per month is a lot of money. A lot of money for like a 20 year old, an 80 year old, 90 year old, any year old, okay? It's a lot of money no matter insane. what. You're not even emotionally prepared nice car by the way it looks like it's brand new and even if you know i don't care how much money i make i would never buy a new car unless like it's a crazy crazy like amount of money i have and so on but usually it's all about investing i want to see how she invests money though because you know people are getting a lot smarter in 2021 2020 everything's about investing these days for it yet my name is alex Fasu on fiverr making $378,000. I know for sure Fiverr is gonna use her for some commercials or something because this is like a big thing and Fiverr loves advertising. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's gonna make money also from being on Fiverr by Fiverr. Hello, I'm 28 years old and I make $378,000 per year as a freelance writer on Fiverr.com. I lived in New York City for the past six years and I- By the way, New York City sucks when it comes to taxes. Like at least, like I'm talking about like 40, to 45% of all this money is gone, just like that, just on taxes, because you have federal taxes, you have um, the state taxes, you have city taxes, you have a bunch of different taxes that are gonna come after you. So yeah, you make 378, but you might take them somewhere around like 250 or 270. Like a lot of money goes toward taxes, guys, like an insane amount, especially like a job like this when she's like, she doesn't really have any expenses. So yeah, 28 years old, by the way, this amount of money is awesome. I now live in Florida. I wonder why she lives in Florida. It's a state taxes, bro, I'm telling you, I'm telling I was about to move to Florida too, but then I'm considering, secret here, moving to Puerto Rico. Um, I'll, I'll see, because in Puerto Rico, you only get taxed 4%, it's crazy. So she's been actually working for Fiverr since 2016. So this is not overnight. We're talking about 401, that's five years of writing. And I don't even know how much experience of actually being a writer and so on. So this is this is not right random or anything like that. Alex primarily ghost writes ebooks and blog posts. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those big guys that you see basically with the blog posts, they're not really writing themselves. On top of that, ebooks, a lot of people pay for people to write their ebooks. I don't get the point of being like an author when you didn't write anything, but I guess it's not really that bad, okay? Because if you have like all your information and you just need somebody to help you put it together, no big deal, okay? I, I, I don't I don't care about that, but like you don't you don't you know nothing about something and you ghost write, that's just a little shady. She charges one thousand dollars for a ten thousand word ebook. How how long is that? Like I wonder how many Alexa. How many pages is in a ten thousand word ebook? Does she know? Sorry, what was that? Alexa doesn't know. I'm sorry, guys. That sucks. My clients very and typically writes one ebook in two days. By the way. That's one ebook every two days, guys. It takes people sometimes even weeks and months to like even write anything. This is awesome. That's why she earns her, her money basically. Beyond what you can imagine from large corporations that you've heard of down to entrepreneurs or influencers or people who manage their influencing dog on Instagram. I've written ebooks for quite a few dogs. Again, I, I, whoa. Dogs, okay. <laughs> I guess you know, cause guess what, man? Um, you got a dog, it's cute. Got an Instagram, got a following. Hey, here's the best treats to feed your dog. 
keep your dog happy, whatever it is. People buy whatever it is, okay? But again, I'm not surprised. A lot of influencers, Instagrammers, corporations, like big guys out there, I don't think they write all their books. And I don't I'm saying I'm not saying you have to, but if you don't know nothing about the topic and you're trying to like get an ebook on it and become like somebody, it's just weird to me. Like, oh my gosh. I don't know anything about finance, but I'm gonna have somebody else write the book for me and act like I know everything about finance. To me, that's just weird. I've been able to take 60 hours worth of work and kind of squish it down to 40 hours because I kind of have my system down so well. That's awesome. It is not about working harder, it's about working smarter. You know, ever since I hired Danny, my editor, by the way, Danny, thank you for all the good work you do. I was editing around like two videos a day, making two videos a day. Now with Danny here, we're basically making around between seven to nine videos daily. So it's a big difference. Work smarter, not harder. She landed a job in New York City after applying to over 200. By the way, when people say, oh, I've applied so much, I've done so much, but this is hard work, right? You apply to over 200 jobs, you get rejected 199 times, and you get that one opportunity. That's what life is all about. You try, you try, you try. But I applied for 10 jobs and said no. Okay, keep applying, keep applying. I accepted this PR job that paid $36,000 per year. I felt so out of place. I was so unhappy and I, I was crying on my keyboard that I quit and I don't normally quit things. And By the way, there's a saying, right? Like, oh, don't be a quitter. But as sometimes, right? If something does not make sense for you and you're literally like not happy there, one, the person you work for, you're not going to give them the best work you possibly can because you don't like it. So you gotta make sure you like it. If you're not happy somewhere, like yeah, if you got bills to pay, make sure you have another job lined up, but don't stay somewhere that you don't like. I'd rather take a pay cut somewhere else and just move over there and be happier. You know, your work is gonna be a third of your life. Make sure you like what you do, bro. You gotta like what you do. That Monday when I was supposed to go into work, I just couldn't. After four weeks, I quit um, the job I had over at Town Sports. I think it was after two, three months or something like that. And it's because my, my dad passed away. When he passed away, they called me, Tommy, come back. I'm like, no, you know what? I'm done here. I'm not coming back. I'm sorry. Got to quit sometimes. I could not go back into that place. It was the darkest I had ever felt. I only had enough money in my bank account to cover my bills for three months. So I was thinking. By the way, that is awesome, okay? She sounds she sounds like, I only had enough money. Most people don't have enough money for like a paycheck, okay? A little paycheck to paycheck. So enough money for three months, this is what I call a very good choice. It's called an emergency fund, right? You have enough money for three, six months, you're good to go. It gives you time to go out there and figure out exactly what you wanna do. To me, that's awesome. Clap, clap, clap. Good job, Alex. Thinking, oh my gosh, if I have to go through this same process again, only to get a job that I again hate, you know, I, I can't keep going through this cycle. Something needs to change. The whole, the whole game is you got to try things out to figure out exactly what you like. There's no way to figure out what you like without trying it. Okay. It's like your mom says like, Hey, try this out. Try, try to eat this. You might like it. Just try it. You got to try some things out. Okay. I did some stuff on Fiverr too. I didn't like it. I'm like, I, I just didn't like it at all. After a few days, I had interest on my press release gig and I was charging $15 for that. And just that interest alone was enough to almost kind of light a fire in me and see, okay, I am capable of earning $15, $20 a day. Well, what if I could earn- Wow, $15, $20 a day to earn in $378,000 a year. A lot of the times you think like, hey, that's not possible to earn that much money, but just find someone that does and see how they did it and see if basically you can also do it. Anything is possible. Someone does it, it's possible. She does it, you can do it too. If you put in the work also, right? It's all about putting in work, having skill, and a little bit of talent all goes a long way. And also a little bit of luck. $50 a day. What if I could earn $100 a day? Now I'm making $3,000 per month and I can cover all of my bills. That is awesome. But $3,000, that's the thing, man, about New York. New York sucks, man. It's so expensive. $3,000, live in a closet. No, thank you. No, thank you. That first week on Fiverr, I started to discover that I was capable of earning money on my own without anyone telling me what to do, which means each passing day. By the way, not everyone can do that. 
not everyone can be an entrepreneur in this manner. By the way, it's kind of like an entrepreneur, but you're also doing somebody else's work, but it's hard. It's easy to be at a, at a job, right? You have direction. They tell you what to do. And by the way, nothing wrong with that. But to be by yourself, making your own schedule, having to go out there, try to earn money when there's no money to be earned just yet, that's very hard. It's not for everyone, by the way. The idea of applying to another job just vanished. It just disappeared into thin air. Alex was working 10 to 12 hours a day, seven days a week. That's how everyone starts out. Well, not everyone, but people start off like that, you know? Currently, I work like from 4.30 to like around 5. That's around maybe like, what is it, like um, 14 hours a day, 12 hours a day, like if you count like breaks and stuff like that. But yeah, you, you got to put time in. But eventually, you optimize, optimize, optimize because a life like this is not healthy whatsoever. Awesome. Editing. She was able to support herself from Fiverr and a few social media clients by April 2016. So that's like less than a year or two years, right? Yeah, she did that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think I cried. <laughs> I realized I can cover my bills with this. Like, I don't have to go back to a corporate job. I want to know how she budgets her money. How does she spend it? That's what I want to know. In Florida, by the way, Florida cost of living is a lot less unless it's like in Miami, Florida, which is like the equivalent almost to New York, except like the income taxes and all that stuff. So let's see. After about a year, I feel like this is almost like an advertisement for Fiverr. I joined Fiverr Pro. By the way, Fiverr Pro is like for the, you know, the elite of Fiverr. Of hitting it really hard on Fiverr. I opened way more services. I think I had like 12 or 13 gigs at the time. That's insane. That's 12 different types of jobs in, in a way, press releases, writing books, ghostwriting, ebooks, um, blog posts, all writing, like whatever it is. That's 12 different types of gigs that she's basically getting and has to manage correctly in order to make money. Like this stuff is not easy, bro. It's, it's not easy. Everything takes a lot of work, you know? You gotta know what works it takes and ask yourself, hey, am I willing to do this, okay? It's, congrats, congrats. I was ranked level two on the site and the site has these levels that allow you to charge more as you advance through them. Fiverr, the company actually reached out to me and asked me to come meet them to film a commercial. And ah, uh, you see guys, commercial. I told you from the beginning of the video, like Fiverr didn't want to do something with this girl. Cause yeah, it's, it's like, it's like the, like the golden girl of, of their entire like stuff. And that's awesome. She earned it. She earned it for sure. Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Wow, look at this, where sellers are hand-vetted and allowed to charge more. That's awesome. That's that's like the best of the best on, on Fiverr. I seen some of them, and some of them charge a lot of money, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Up until January 2018, I was making around six to eight K per month, which is incredible, of course. But it was January into February 2018 when I was launched into the double digit realm, meaning I was making 13 K. 14k 15k uh which was essentially a bro what the heck am i am i am i losing my mind here how much is three hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars, right divided by 12 that's thirty one thousand dollars a month right so how does she get there let's let's hear and by the way some businesses guys have a pricing advantage where basically to make more money all you have to do is raise the prices okay and i think she did that i'm not confused here because once she becomes a pro she has norarity norarity no terrority. I can't say that word. Danny, include like a like a little like um robot saying it. I can't say it. But yeah. Notoriety. She has notoriety, so people are willing to pay her more money. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know why you guys come here. I cannot speak for nothing. I need her to speak for me. It completely, I doubled my income overnight, and that was crazy to me. In 2017, I made $63,000 that year, and in 2018, I jumped to making 273. dollars Whoa, 2017, 2018. That is awesome. Thousand dollars, which was the craziest jump you could ever imagine. <laughs> and by the way, I think basically maybe this year she's gonna project to basically make a lot more money. There's something I want to say about making this much money. I'll say it like as soon as I find out what's going on here. Give me a second, guys. Budget as a freelancer. Well, let me tell you right now, guys. Right when you make this much money. You have to understand that sometimes this stuff is not sustainable. Like you make a lot of money when things are going great, but when things go bad, you don't make a lot of money whatsoever. So during these times when you make a lot of money, like YouTube or like freelance and all this stuff, you got to take this money and basically put this money to work for you. So when you're not working anymore, you have to have passive income coming in because you never know what's going to happen. If YouTube stops 
I got money inside. I'm fine. I'll be fine. But if if if, if I was just like betting on YouTube forever, not not a great idea. Not a great idea at all. It took me a couple years to accept that I was making that money. The only thing that I would say I started to spend more on to treat myself was travel experiences and music festivals. By the way, guys, okay, just, just to put it into context here, right? If she has this much money and she spends, for example, just like 10% of this money just on having fun, that's $37,000. So yeah, she can go traveling. She can go to music festivals. She can enjoy herself. She can do whatever she wants to do as long as she's not going crazy. And as long as she's like basically investing too, because you never know when this is going to stop, right? I'm pretty sure if a financial planner sat down with me, they would be disgusted by me and my management of my money, <laughs> but. Wow, let's see what she's doing, man. That, I, that is not fun. I don't find those things funny. People laugh with like, I like mess. I don't find those things funny at all, you know, but let, let's see, let's see, let's see what's going on, man. My strategy is just basically, if I know I'm making like 15 to 20 K, I kind of just in my head, try and make sure I'm saving at least 50% of it. Okay, she has about 100K in her retirement accounts, which is fair. She saves 50%, but what do you spend 50%, basically 15K a month, what do you spend that money on? I, I don't know, I don't know. This year, I'm definitely gonna contribute less to my retirement, but I already know my accountant is gonna tell me that I should still contribute something because it helps with my taxable income. <laughs> I can hear them now, so I think like- Why not? Why not contribute? Why not? Ma she can get like, a, I think it's like, a, it's called a SEP, um, self-employment um, retirement account and contribute up to like $57,000 a year. Like why not contribute all that money into that account, also into a brokerage account. Also, I hope her house is paid off, man. The good thing about these stories is basically people make a lot of money, but you don't know when it's gonna stop. Because again, her money makers are these. Imagine an accident. What happens now, right? It, it can You never know what's going to happen at all. I want people to be prepared for all this stuff, you know? Prepare, prepare, prepare. With most entrepreneurs, I have a problem with having my money like locked up in accounts. It's just not how my brain works. I kind of like to have it at my disposal. So if I come up with some like project or real estate investment I want to do, I can just... Okay, real estate investment. That's what she wants to get into. That's fair. You know it's all about having money work for you, whether that's in the market or, for example, in real estate, it's still working for you. Passive income is key, no matter what. Grab it. I hate estimated taxes. Can't stand them. I use a CPA, like an accountant, hands down. Costs like... So do I. Like $1,200, it's worth it to me. Yeah, $1,200 a year, plus like the filings like for personal taxes. That's a good price. It's not that bad at all, but it's worth it. So you don't have to worry about anything. You know, you, you, uh, you know, Danny, my editor can edit 10 times better than I can. My accountant can, I'm an accountant, by the way, also like I graduated as an accountant, but my accountant is a CPA with like 10, 15 years of experience can do a much better job than I can when it comes to saving taxes and looking for a little, ooh, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I knew she moved to Florida because she wanted to save on state income taxes. Yep. Not surprised. Wow, health insurance sucks, man. It's so expensive. It's insane in America. And by the way, this is like an American thing. It's not normal across the across the world. American health like care is so crazy. A thousand dollars a year out of pocket for dental care. Whoa. Two. I don't understand this. I don't get how people spend $2,000 a month on food. Like, what are you buying? I don't get it. I don't, last time I made fun of Kevin, like a YouTuber, his family of four spends $2,000. I was mad about that. One person and a cat, maybe like a girlfriend or whatever, a boyfriend, is spent $2,000. To me, that makes absolutely no sense. I can, I can't, I can't, I can't. When you're in a city like New York, it's very easy to go somewhere. You can drop $200 on dinner. $200? That's not easy. That's a choice, okay? That is a choice. That is a choice, okay? That's crazy. $200 on a dinner. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. And I think it kind of contributed to my desire to move out of New York City, which I am now in Florida. And my food and drinks is probably down to $500. It's not even close to what it was in New York City. I don't get it. This had $2,000 on food, but she's saying $500. Somebody's lying here. I don't get what's going on here. Maybe it's, maybe I'm just not hearing it correctly. Alex bought a Jeep 
Wrangler for $50,000. I, I accept that. <laughs> buy your stuff for cash. Call it a day. You can afford it. Also, buy your home for cash. That way, that's taken care of. You have it. No one can take it away from you. And if you don't make that much money, you're still going to be good. Still solid. Congrats. No problem here. I wanted to still be mobile and not reliant on flights to go travel and see our country. All right, guys, this is 2020, and this is where things get exciting for her, I guess. 2020, man, missed the pandemic, missed everything. I had a pretty good year in 2020 also. It's insane. And 2021, man, uh, with the three channels coming on now, it should be a better year. We'll see what happens. You never know what's going to happen, though. That's why you always want to plan. The craziest thing happened because while so many people were losing their jobs and so many businesses were going out of business, so many people were coming online to start selling products and services because that was the only way they were going to make contact with other human beings. That is true, man. Sometimes situations force you to adapt. People like her take that as an opportunity. That's awesome. But whenever you see something shifting, you got to take advantage of it before something happens and then kind of ruins your life, okay? It's important to see what's happening and kind of like shift into it, not immediately, but step by step. So they needed someone like a copywriter to help them fill their website, their blog, their social media posts, which led me to having my biggest month that I have ever had on Fiverr wow. in May 2020. Wow, look at that. Look at that, guys. 2020, $378,000. That is a lot of money. Look at this, guys. This amount right here, if we just add up all this money here, we have... So we have 63 plus 273 plus 350 plus 378 multiplied by 1,000. Because this is in the thousands. That's over a million dollars? Am I bugging? It is over a million dollars. That is so much money. That's more like the people are making basically like, like 20, 30, 40 years of working. So it's important. You grab this money, house $350,000, whatever. You're good to go. You're good to go. It's so awesome. I made over $36,000 that month, which was insane. And it was so weird to have that happening while there was so much bad happening in the world at the same time. It was a very weird and conflicting feeling. Oh, she made online courses, Shopify, and private clients. That's awesome. She's diversifying her income. That's awesome. Appreciate that. This is a very interesting video. Alex lent her mom money to buy a house in Cape Coral, Florida. I don't lend family money. I'd rather just give you the money. You're good to go. It changes the relationship. I don't do that. I said to her, you know, hey, I have... 350k chilling in my bank account you want me to get this house and you can pay me back when you sell the albany house and she said yeah i mean sure so we kind of just you know made a collective decision i don't know my family were old school i guess we alex sister alex mom cool. share our resources and everything for this house my mom put down the twenty thousand dollar down payment and then i paid the rest which was two hundred eighty seven thousand, and we transferred the money out of my bank account to who who owns the house who owns the house? The seller. And in full, paid in cash, you know, paid off. So I was never really scared, but it was definitely very new for me the last two months to live with having 20 to 30K in my bank account instead of 300K. Yeah, it's all about investing, you know? That's gonna make me sound full of myself, but I just become very used to having a lot of money in my bank account because I've been saving it. In January, her mom sold her Albany house and paid Alex back in full. That's awesome, you know? But again, it's, it's dangerous because basically, I'll, it sounds kind of flimsy here, but I would have said, okay, mom, I'll buy this house. It's in my name. You live there. Once you sell the Albany house, you basically buy it from me. That's it. We transfer everything. Everything's normal. But what happens if like the market crashed, the real estate market, and now that house is not worth enough? Like what happens now? How do things get, you know, it's very complicated. So I try usually not to get involved and lend the family money. I, I, I try my best with that stuff, man. Nice. So she doesn't have any real estate yet or she does? This first property I want to buy in Southwest Florida, um, it's cheap because it's only a one, two bedroom, tiny little thing. So I'm actually thinking of buying two of them right off the bat. 
One of them I would immediately start to rent out on Airbnb, and then the other one I would use for myself slash a filming studio. I like how she's all about basically about like um, buying things in cash, not going into crazy debt. To me, that sounds awesome. So I appreciate that, Alex. Because right now I don't have one and I definitely want one set up. So I'm more inclined to do YouTube content and everything I keep putting off. But until I- That's gonna be a lot of work. You know, Fiverr, freelancing work, plus YouTube, plus private clients, plus a lot of things. It's gonna be a lot, a lot of work. She's probably gonna be outsourcing or freelancing like Native, <laughs> like Native Brian said in the comments down below. If I buy that second one, I will, yeah, live in the first one. I want to eventually quit Fiverr just because I'm, again, like that classic entrepreneurial type where I get bored. You know, how do I say this? This guy right here has been doing the same boring stuff for, I don't know, like 30, 40, 50 years. Dave Ramsey has been on radio for 30 years talking about the same thing every day. I've been on YouTube for the past, I don't even know how long, just talking about the same things on YouTube too. Like work gets boring at some point, right? But you have to keep learning and kind of like, um making things interesting for yourself, right? There's a saying, right? If, if you're able to put up with something like for a very long time, because money, making boring, making money sound like boring, right? You find out what makes you money and you rinse and repeat. That's all it takes. So it takes a special person not to go out there and mess it up when things are going good for them. And I would love to transition more into a full-time educator with everything that I've learned and kind of phase away from actually writing the blogs and, and move more into a role where I'm helping people write blogs. I'm helping people write blogs. So she wants to teach people how to write blogs. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. I think 22 year old me working a job I hated in New York City, making $36,000 per year. I could not in my wildest dreams have imagined that. That's why you never know in life where you're going, man. It's, it's such a crazy thing, you know? Five years ago, I, I was trying to make $50 or $100 like trying to sell phones and, and, and working for my barber as an accountant slash helping him out with stuff and also like, um helping with finance and stuff like that. You never know what's gonna happen. This would be me at 28. Not for a second did I ever think this would be where I am. I did not dream that big. Alex is very open about how much she makes with her. Yeah, same thing. Social. I'm very open on social media. I don't like talking about it in person though. It, it kind of, it, it gives me like like weird vibes. Like I don't like talking about money in person that much. Like I'll tell you about money, how it works, but act like, you know, talking about like how much I make, usually it's just weird. That's weird because I talk about money every single day on YouTube though, right? So it's, it's strange, I know. Women get treated much differently than men if they're posting about the money they earn. On TikTok, if I post a video showing my receipts, as Gen Z says, the comments are flooded with men saying, no, you don't, you know, calling me. Wow, I think that's for everything. I get the same comments. Graham gets the same comment. I have people commenting on my videos saying Graham is a, is, a, is a scam, and people who that comment on my videos saying like you don't make that much money. It's it's a normal thing. It's not, I don't think it's like a male female thing at all. The mean terms, sexual terms, or saying oh she made it on OnlyFans. I definitely <laughs> OnlyFans <laughs> noticed a huge pushback being a woman, and I've had all sorts of people write to. Where the heck is that? Is that like Iceland or something? Is it not cold there? It looks crazy, man. Like people are crazy. And say it's very unbecoming as a woman that you post that money. You know, you should keep your mouth shut about it. So it's definitely. I think she reads too many comments. Just, just stop reading comments and do more of what you want to do. Hard being a woman doing this, but I think it's also forced me to develop thicker skin. Hey guys, I'm gonna give you my top five time management tips that help me churn out a ton of work every day. Got a lot of love too, and. I Three tips for traveling. I can't. I like traveling, but I'm not a big fan of it. I feel like if I if I have a wallpaper of some place, like I feel like I've already been there. You know, my my fiance is like the opposite. She loves traveling. I discovered that there's so many people out there that do want to freelance. They don't hate me for it, and they want to learn from me and they want to learn what I know. Being transparent with what I am earning has earned these people's trust and showed them it is possible. A girl from a farm in upstate New York did it. I can do it too. That is awesome, Alex. And that is it, guys, for this video. Overall, making over a million dollars in around four years is a big, big gap. And by the way, the whole goal is that if you do make that much money, you got to go ahead and try to invest that money because you never know when that money is going to stop coming in. As far as lending money to your family, that's just not what I do because things get complicated. You never know what's going to happen. It gets very, very weird, okay? That's my advice on that. As far as moving on to YouTube and like doing things, I, I agree. You know, if you want to, it's, it's easier to sell 
like something they can do over and over and over again than to basically sell a service. So I also get that. It's all about how people want to do it. But overall, guys, I'm impressed. This is awesome. A million dollars in four years, that is awesome. That's like retirement money right there, right? So it's all about what you do with the money is the most important thing. So we'll see what happens to Alex. Hopefully she becomes a YouTuber. Hopefully I see her on YouTube, okay? So guys, that's it for this video. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought about Alex. Is it crazy? Is it not crazy? Are you gonna go on Fiverr now because it's kind of like a Fiverr commercial in a way? I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, like this video if you liked it. On top of that, also subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified. And if you guys wanna text me, at only one one, join my Patreon, link down below, or send me a DM on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. And before I go, if you wanna watch another video, well, here it is right here. And click my face right here. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And as always, peace.